Well, hello, and welcome to Stop, Let's Team Up, episode 61, Danger Street 5, and first issue special 5. Yes, two weeks in a row, because I was behind in buying my comics. You get two of these two weeks in a row. Um, and I hope you're enjoying it. I, I look at, I don't pay too much attention to my download features. I'm, the show is slowly building a, a small and, I think, very warm following. I The people I interact with are very gracious and very nice, and I've made... New friends doing it. Billy, Martin, um, Dave, Peter, uh, Paul, everybody who's been on my show. Uh, and it's been great. So I'm going to look to have more guests and more topics. Um, I definitely want, I'm going to try to find someone out there who wants to talk some Fantastic Four because I'm enjoying my reread. Oh, and Ron. God, good. God forbid. Ron. Ron uh, from Fantastic Comic Fan. Big support big co uh, cheerleader for this podcast as I am for his so but let's get started so uh, let's give me get you some pertinent data on Danger Street number five okay this comic was cover dated June 2023 uh, it is a DC black label I have not mentioned that yes this does is it is it not I, this is non-continuity if it's uh, well, I understand the black label works so that's good to know. Executive editor of this book is Marie Jarvis. Cover artist is Jorge Fornes. Forde, I hope I am pronouncing that right. Um, written by Tom King. Penciled and inked by Jorge Fornes. Uh, colorist Dave Stewart, the amazing Dave Stewart. Letter Clayton Cowles. There's some beautiful lettering in this book. I do appreciate lettering. Um, I don't. People don't talk about it as much. There's some greats out there and uh, very. And it's a skill set. Uh, editors, Brittany Holtzfuzzer, Jillian Grant, Chris Conway. Uh, and the title of this is Chapter 5, Manhunter. Featured characters in this one are uh, Starman McKay, Michael Th Thomas, Warlord Traven Morgan. Supporting characters are Batman, uh, Flashback Only, Codename Assassin, Flashback Only, The Dingbats, which is Bananas Crunch and Nonfat, The Green Team, uh, Cecil Sunbeam, Commodore Murphy, Jack Ryder, alias the Creeper, Lady Cop, Lisa Warner, Naboo, our narrator, Tagonis, um, the New Gods, Ma Manhunter Cult, Grand Manhunter Grandmaster, and Mark Char. Um, and then touches on some other people. Just I'm not going to read the rest because it's that's getting down to the major minutia. But so let me talk about this comic. One, I like the cover. Okay, at least the cover I got, which is Travis driving away from Orion and Michael fighting in the sky. And he's got a coffin in the back seat, and it says book five man and across the, um, the Corvette. I think they're driving in a Corvette. They're driving a muscle car. Um, and they're driving out of tank. He's driving out of the graveyard. Uh, I like that the license plate is meta 0461. Um, and the county is Fornes because he put his name on. I love that. That's great. That's really cool. Uh, but it's an okay cover. It's not my favorite. Um, let's see in the back. Does it back show the alternate covers? Hold one second. I'm going to look at the alternate covers and I'll be right back. All right. That was me doing bad home. I got back. I looked. It's a nice Mitch Gerard. Gerard's uh, who did Mr. Miracle with Tom King did a cover. And it looks like uh, a beat up old comic cover. Uh, it's got sellotape on it. It's uh, kind of tattered around the edges big crease in it but it, it's great and it's very kirby-esque because it's got a very kirby feel to this version of mark shaw and then the background is a love letter to kirby backgrounds so it's great i wish i had gotten that one i really wish i got that one but that's probably one of those ones i pay you gotta pay more for a cover I, I, I ain't doing that i ain't doing that it's not I, my collector collector thing is now mine's all about the hard covers and the the shelf porn um I've gotten a few more good ones this week, and I'll talk to you about that then. But it's that's it. My that's my critique of my cover, and that would be about my only critique. That and I just got something wet on my uh, my copy. I may be getting another one when I walk to the comic shop today. Oops. But this is a good comic. Um, yeah, it picks up uh, where the last issue ended at the Orion has just showed up at the graveyard where they're digging. Um, again, it starts with the amazing Doctor Fate as our narrator. I can't wait till see. I want to see how much of this he plays a part in. 
or is he just the narrator? We got a couple. Well, we only got a couple issues till we're covering his his first issue special by Walt Simonson, but he's narrating it, and it's it's that that nine panel grid. Um, Orion is threatening Travis and Michael uh, to step away from the chi- the dead child. Travis recognizes him, and my it turns it. They don't heed Orion's wishes, and he fires on him. But Michael's already ready, and he flies right at him. And they start a battle starts in the thing, and it's such a loud explosion that it flips uh, all the way across and into town. It it the shock wave. Um, there's a vibration, and then there's a giant shock wave, and it shows a uh, lady cop, uh, Lisa. I'm gonna call her Liza from now on, um, because I really hate saying lady cop. It just really doesn't age well. Um, but it just throws her in the desk across the office. Then we cut to. Uh, the the top, I guess it's the top of the highest building in this small town. Um, uh, they go the dingbats, surviving dingbats are talking about uh, what's been going on, and Crunch tells him that he's seen them. He's seen them in the car, and they know where they're headed, and that's when they they can see the the fight they can see the fight from across town this big yellow dome and it's a nice beautiful one page shot and then we cut to the movie studio and the little the movie director uh, kid um he's hiding in his trailer talking to someone talking to his i guess his shrink or his girlfriend i don't know julie and he goes outside and sees all his bodyguards are gone, dead. And there's Manhunter. And he begs Manhunter not to kill him. Um, and he does it. Then we cut to Commodore, the Commodore and Codename Assassin. Something happens. Something happens which makes Codename Assassin pass out. And that freaks out the Commodore. And then we go back to the battle and it's great. And it's got a page of the battle and the colors in this is it's all like orange browns reds blues it's just the coloring is just stunning just i mean it's just some beautiful beautiful work i mean the arts are gorgeous but i mean i'm the coloring in this is amazing um and it's got some nice narration uh the i'm gonna read you the narration from this page and this is where michael and orion are going toe to toe Across the kingdom, far from the knights, the son of dragons and the good prince continued to exchange blows. Each believed himself to be righteous. Each believed himself to be strong. Um, And after that, it's basically Michael has hit Orion so hard that he's driven him into the ground. And at that point, Orion goes, you dare. And then the narration is, it was a battle for poets to recall years later where children sat at their knees, imagining the thrilling clash of titans. And then Michael's response Yes, I dare. And then we cut to Travis, who the old man has got a bad back. He is digging up the kid's body. Or is it Atlas's body? I don't know. I'm, oh, wait a minute. I may be a little confused. But he's listening to the battle, but he doesn't stop doing what he's doing. Uh, then we cut the lady cop heading to her cop car, and she heads toward where all the sounds are coming from. We'll say in the comic has a nice double page spread. I don't know. Oh, Jeff Spokes does this and it's all kind of like the dawn of the new DC characters. Uh, what I've read, I've liked of the individual things. Don't know what to say. I don't know what it's. I want to see where it goes. I'm, I'm more in tune to give this a chance because they're starting kind of, it's a soft, it's a softer reboot. Uh, then we cut to Jack Ryder. He's uh, working in the office. He's getting ready to do a program and he opens his drawer to pull out a cigar from his, you know, box of cassars and written inside the roof is rooftop now. And it's got a Batman symbol. So he goes up there and there's Batman being Batman. I want a Jorge Fornes. I want Mr. Fornes to do a Batman comic book. Like a very Gotham police centric Batman comic. I think he'd be perfect for it. And they have a little conversation. Um, Batman and Jack Batman's trying to he's trying to browbeat Jack Ryder and he's just telling him I know what you're doing stop and he says stop saying the things about the outsider Jack stop it it's causing it's not there you know it's just 
race baiting, basically. He's explaining it's race basing, baiting, and he's picking up the steak. You know, he's making things worse. And then Jack just leads into him, you know. Um, when, you know, Jack's saying he's for the working man. And he's, rem- and this, I think this is reared at more at Bruce than at Batman. They never did like, they never liked you, did they? Oh, sure. You're popular with the elites and the fancy people going to the show in the city, hoping no one hurts them on their way back to the car. But the real people, the working people, they know who you are, really are. A rich kid who thinks he's too good for them. Who stands on Exodus of Deleted Roost, literally looking down on them, judging them? Let me let me ask you, all the servants you've got working in your mansion, when they when do when they when they go home at night, do they watch any do they watch my show? I haven't done anything, and you don't get to con- somehow control what I say. No. You just get your exploded, delete dirty gloves off me and go sulk in your kitty cave. And I was, I loved it. It's my, one of my favorite parts of this comic. It makes perfect sense that the, that the creeper, Jack Ryder, wouldn't give a crap what Batman said. I love it. I love it. And it's true about Batman that he didn't say anything wrong about Batman. Um, as a character, you have to look at Batman. I like Batman. He's not my favorite character, but. There's some weird stuff about standing on a rooftop being angry for 30 years. Um, all right. Then we get to back to the grave. And with this little narration from Doc Fate, back in the graves, the prince sought to wander as he contemplates the astounding circumstances that led him to this uncustomary fate. And it's basically Morgan thinking about, you know, what his life could have been. No, Tara, I'm fine. I, I love you. I love Skateris. I'll I'll be he- happy here forever. I mean, do I ever, do I have other dreams? Sure. What man my age doesn't? I mean, they don't get me wrong. This is great fighting the hordes and the magic and witches, all that. It's great. Yeah, but yeah, okay. Sometimes, sometimes I see my see myself as I don't know, being bare chested guy with the sword and the quests. That should be enough. It is enough. Married to a princess, you to you, but it, yeah, but it just sometimes. I guess I just want to be a superhero. And he's walking with the kid's casket over his shoulder uh, to the car. And the fight is still going on in the background of almost every panel. Um, When he's talking to Tara, it's him, the fight, him, the fight, him, the fight. Next page is a giant thing. And he's when he says, I just guess I just want to be a superhero. They're the two heroes battling in the sky are glowing behind him like the sun over his shoulder. It's a great page. Uh, And then the next page is. Battle punch. Below that is him getting the ca- coffin in the car. Battle battle panel. Him getting in the car. And then a battle panel. And then we cut to the dingbats. And they're on their, their four-wheeler. Uh, heading into the into the desert. Uh, and they're going to go get... So they're going to do business. And then we go back to the, the great team liner. The green team liner. And uh, Operation Assassin and... Uh, Uh, codename is Ashton are making another deal, just kind of going over their things back to, and then it's back to uh, Travis uh, texting Starman is telling him where to meet up after he beats the crap out of Orion. And as Travis is driving at high speed, he swerves to miss the dingbats coming in. And then he turns around to cuss at him. And then he crashes into lady uh, to Liza's car. And the casket goes flying through the air the next, then we see is the kids have gotten to the crater where the fight was and Michael has just collapsed on top of Orion, both knocked out. And they're getting ready to kill him. And then the next thing is the, the green team, big time movie producer, Manhunter's back and he chokes him to sleep in his death. Uh, it's great. It, and it, then it's, and it's, then we see everybody, every character in the nine panel thing at the end being reset, you know, where we are for letting us know we're going to be in next issue. It's was a great issue. It was, um, I just, it was the action sequence. It was kind of, it, I liked how they use the action of actually have five, you know, having a superhero fight. Cause this is a superhero comic. It should have a superhero fight at some point. Uh, maybe more often. I don't think so. Cause I just really didn't notice this is, the first real one we've seen. And it's a good one because he also have Travis, Dingbats, uh, 
Liza, uh, Creeper. Everybody is circling. You got one circle circling around the fight and then the circle going around the group that is circling of the fight. There's like a tear. It's sinking down. And then the gods are on the outer ring of this story, I feel. It's really good. I'm enjoying the hell out of this comic. It's probably my favorite comic in a few years, which is amazing. Because I, I was saying that about Tom King's uh, and Phil Hester's Gotham Slam Body book. It's, oh, I can't remember it. Gotham at Night or something. It's really good. It's incredibly good. When it's, it's Phil Hester. But now let's talk about... First issue, special five. All right. The, let's go to the fandom base and get some pertinent information about this. Uh, this is first issue, special volume one, number five, cover date, August 1975. Uh, an amazing Jack Kirby, D. Bruce Barry, Tahana Woods cover. Uh, the name of this story is called Manhunter. Uh, writer Jack Kirby, penciler Jack Kirby, inker D. Bruce Barry, Letterer D. Bruce Berry, editor Jack Kirby. Uh, the synopsis for this book is Mark Shaw, a public defender, is frustrated in his attempt to gain justice and safeguard the innocent. His uncle introduces him to the ancient society of the Manhunters, whose arcane skills and weaponry have been empowered to bring down many such villains. Mark Shaw becomes a Manhunter, taking the mask and costume from his predecessor, and begins a war against a gangster, gangster nicknamed the Hog. And this is the first appearance of Mark Shaw, who um, I've talked, I talked away in a very early episode with Ron about Steve Englehart's run on Justice League. Uh, and Mark Shaw becomes a big part of that. These man hunters appear there next, I think. And then he becomes a privateer. And then the Sarzar. And then these we get in Green Lantern. Uh, we get a little more add on to their stuff. But this is the first appearance of it. It's a very Jack Kirby character. Um, and it's very much like a character you would create it in the 40s, which is why I've always enjoyed this issue. Uh, and let me get to that so we can go through this issue bit by bit. But it's this is the first appearance of Manhunter, of Grand, the Grand Master, of Manhunter Sect, a.k.a. the Sean, and a lot of good stuff. So, Oop, I bookmarked the wrong place. Here we go. This is Manhunter. It's got a great cover. Um, it's a, it, there's something about the 70s, the 70s Kirby art, which is the Kirby art I first was. This is kind of the first Kirby art I saw was New Gods. You know, it wasn't FF. It wasn't Avengers. It was stuff like this, because this is where he's drawing his Captain America, the Mad Bomb story. It wasn't, the, you know, and now I'm reading, I'm actually 14 I'm, of FF, and I'm really enjoying seeing his art grow some. Um, and I really kind of want to read some of his Boy Ranch and Boy Commando stuff because my brother just says there's a there's a level on that that is just above and beyond. So I want to give it a try. And I think this one above and beyond. Um, this one, again, it had the Manhunter, the Justice Principle. It's a nice article explaining uh, where the story comes from, from Jack. And he talks about uh, democracy and how we all have to do our part but how does justice play in that when um we live in a society where you're not supposed to fear from the top you shouldn't fear from the top uh be free of fear not not have to but be, be free of it that you are so stable and so you are an equal party to even the people at the top so everybody's equal it, 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 and he talks about heroes who fight against things and he use arthur robin hood Xavier from les mis uh, it's great. And this coming from a combat veteran who, veteran who fought. He's part of the greatest generation. Um, so I think a lot of those guys, that is the ones that, you know, fought in that war when they came back, I would say most of them, they were, you know, some people may have been changed differently, but they saw that, that the world needed heroes, but also said that I'm not a hero. I just did my bit. It's a, me being sentimental about that generation. Uh, but I think because he was, because he had that mindset, because he had seen the horrors of what went on um, in the world. So, but this starts with a great panel, but the cut back to the cover, I didn't finish. It's like there's a, a head tagged to the wall and the Manhunter's coming and the head is talking, we know you come, Manhunter, sooner or later. And Manhunter's in the background. And then the interior first page, it's that's reversed. It's not the same image, but it's, Basically, it's another version of it. 
and it says, In the far and distant corners of earth there are fearsome criminals who hide in vain from justice and a name which has haunted their kind through the ages. This is his story. This is the origin of Manhunter. And Manhunter saying to the head, The cave of talking heads, I found my quarry. And the head on the wall goes, We knew you'd come, Manhunter, sooner or later. It's great. It's just a big chapter one. And then the second page is a two-page spread with Manhunter in this room. And this isn't Mark Shaw. This is his predecessor. Uh, and there are all these heads. And it's going, here we we are in the last refuge of the murdering sect. It's strange, but facile mine that absorbs mask is absorbed in mask and killing. And it's all the faces, mask talking to him, welcoming him, give, talking crap. And then um, the person controlling him goes, listen to the man, Hannah. My heads never lie. Even they speak with recording tape. Um, and then like brave beams come out. Oh, yeah. And then he finishes it. And the chopper doesn't lie. Um, and then they have a little fight. They have a great, it's a great fight with sequences. It's like energy coming from the mouth of faces. His badon shoots a blast. The action poses of Jack Kirby. Um, and they just, they banter. And then it goes to chapter two. Which chapter two begins with Liar, it's spider counterpart. Each homicidal mind spins endless death traps to claim its victims. It is the eternal risk of the adversary who dares to enter the deadly web above the manhunter. Death descends. Chopper's deadly invention, the electric head. And this device with a cable coming out clamps itself on top of manhunter and is shooting all this voltage through it. And manhunter has just enough strength to aim the rollover, shoot the baton, and go through the chopper shield, and it kills him. And you see this big... Chopper's this little guy with a green cloak and this big purple and pink head you find out it's just a head thing he's just some bad scientist in a suit and tie under that and he try he gets up with it he has an axe and for some reason and he gets up and he charges manhunter and manhunter parries the blade with the electrum and it electrocutes chopper and kills him and then banner takes off his mask and he's an old man and he's just he's tired um and then we cut to mark shaw complaining to his uncle about how he's how he's frustrated and then you know he's trying to give someone good defense even though the person did it and the person's bad but that's the system and then his uncle opens a thing uh, a, a secret package which he knows and uh, marco's that secret door it leads to your artifact collection yes i've gathered some unique objects during my years as an archaeologist step in and he shows him and he shows him this uh, this ancient rope man manhunter costume and he tells him about the about what he knows about it and gives him the the, uh, the medallion to prove it. And then we cut back to the previous Manhunter and he's talking to the high man, uh, to the Grandmaster and they go to the great symbol of the lion and the and it speaks, suddenly speaks, hello, my name is Mark Shaw. And it's basically, Shaw and him have been connected Um. He's he's made a con he's become a manhunter. Then these three gangsters in truly glorious Kirby costuming with their very he man, he had imagination in, when it came to co- clothes, what people wore. Um but you know, the manhunter fights. Um his uncle is okay. The bad guys have been beaten, and then he's like, um, what are you gonna do? What Manhunter was meant to do serve the cause of justice. I'm going after the Al B for the Hall and his organization. And his uncle goes, Be careful, Mark. It's a mighty big target. Good luck. Turn those thugs over to the police. Goodbye, Uncle. And back at um, the Grandmaster, him and his the predecessor, Manhunter, are watching from afar. Um, and, they're, and they're excited. Uh, and they're going to keep an eye on him. And Grandmaster opens. I'll activate the mystic sensors. A thousand years of study has enabled us to follow the quarry as well. And then we cut to a panel. The next image that appears reflects the ruthless face of evil. Grown powerful and cunning in its continued forays against society. It's the face of the Manhunter's target. 
and it, that's how we see boss. That's how we see Boss Hog, um, the Hog. Uh, I thought it was a good comic book. I thought it was entertaining. I thought it was um, beautifully drawn. I, I'm a big Jack Kirby fan, uh, and I think this here more than others. I, let me get into more into FF, and I need to go and read his Thor too. I really have not. I should really read that Thor uh, as much as my brother tried to get me to read it. And I like, I like what he describes about it but um this was great it's great 70s kirby it was a solid that could have been a good series he could have done a lot of weird kirby stuff like he did in omac and new gods and stuff like that and i think that's what he was aiming for i mean i really do um so that's great that's great i enjoyed it um and just powerfully laid out and the colors are popping and i do love the way he dresses everybody like they're from shaft it's awful and wonderful at the same time. So, I, hey, we're five issues in. We're almost halfway. We're not. We're, next issue will be at the halfway mark, uh, and that'll be in a few weeks. I'm enjoying it. I hope you're enjoying it. I hope you. I really hope if you're listening to me, you're going on the app and you're reading these issues. They're in the They're in the app. So you get an idea of what he was dealing with. I mean, I. I wish I now had read the entire first issue special hardcover before it started coming out. And just not talked about it until I then read the issue that corresponds with it. Because some of these I've read and some I've, I've not. I know I have not read Dingbats. I know I have not read The Outsiders. Um, I never re- I had never read Lady Cup. I don't think my brother would have bought it. I mean, I could see that not being a... Just, you know, spinner rack. It, it, God, it's like the TV shows. My brother's, even me, you know... Go, we'd ride our bikes up to the drugstore. I'd get a comic book off the rack. I'm uh, slurping. Hope the lady dot behind the counter didn't drop her cigarette ash in my, my slushy. I uh, got too much candy, rode my bike home, and read that comic over and over again. So um, I really like that some of the times when I'm covering comics from the mid 70s, because that was kind of a sweet spot of like, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, I've never seen this. And just really, and I, that's when I started to put Avengers in my brain. My brother would give me, you know, he had them all. So those Engelhart issues got read. 10, 15, 20 times. And I made lists, and once I found out who was an Avenger, when, blah, 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 you know, just that. So I kind of get that nostalgia feel when I read it. And this one a little bit more because of the myth, because I had, I had read it and I did like, I do like this here at Kirby. All right. So Tuesday is uh, the next two adventures of Prince Gavin on Opal City Confidential. And then the introduction of Shadow Lass on Thursday in my Legion Adventure. And then next week, I'm not sure yet. I haven't really decided. Um, maybe something about where I am at with the FF. Maybe something Marvel-y, because I'm doing so much DC. Um, and maybe something... I've been reading some more stuff, like paper. I'm in the middle of reading Paper Girls. I'm kind of alternating between Paper Girls and uh, Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, FF, and, and whatever I'm reading for the podcast. So, all right. You know, as always, you guys be safe. You are smart. Please be kind to each other. Let everybody know. Let let someone know how you feel. Okay? You know, if they're a good person, even if it's just some, a co-worker, like I've said a couple times over the last couple days that, you know, I lost somebody at work. One of my agents passed away last week. So be, come here, just be kind to each other. You don't know when the last time you speak to someone's going to be. And read some comic books. It'll make you feel better. 